Hello, everyone, and welcome to Saturday's Brunch and Learn. Um, you are getting me in my Grinch sweatshirt, which is just perpetually me. I'm going to be really honest. I'm just, a, it's my spirit animal. Um, <laughs> so Casey is here. Um, today, we're going to talk about getting started studying and creating that study plan when you're already busy AF, right? We all know you're busy. We know you have kids. We know you have pets. We know you have other jobs. We know that you're working. And like sometimes studying can be very overwhelming because it's really hard to figure out what do I need to be successful um, and how can I shift my time and make sure I'm meeting everyone's needs. And if you're a parent or you're a pet parent, like not having that guilt. Um, so let's talk about that. Okay. So it's time to start studying. What do I need? Some of you may already be in the process of studying, but some of you may be walking into studying and being like, oh my God, this giant book and I have to read it. And what am I going to do? And there's all of these resources out there. First, you need to take a deep breath. Everything will be okay. Right. You're in the right place because you're at study notes. And so we are here to help you. And this is what we're going to do. So you obviously need Cooper because it's your science and you're a scientist. So this is where your science comes from. You're going to need your favorite pins and your favorite paper. Um, so if you're Casey, you love a good bank pen. That's her jam. She loves a good bank pen. She loves a Sharpie. Um, for me, <laughs> I am not, Liat loves all of the pins. I have like very specific pins I like to use. I like to use the Bic Gelosity pins and I like to use the, um, there's another kind of pen that I really like, but that, that's about it. I don't, I, and I don't have it with me right now, but I, if I will write with a pen and if I don't like it, I will scrap everything and start again. So it really is important to me. Also, I know when you were like, what do you mean by paper? So everyone's brain is different. My brain best works with graph paper. So if I'm taking notes and I really need to like organize my thoughts, I have to use graph paper. Line paper does not work for me. Computer paper doesn't work for me. So think about the paper you need. Do you need dot paper? Do you need graph paper? What size of paper do you need um, so that you can be successful and you can feel like your notes are very reinforcing to you? Um, and then you want to make sure that you have a way to take data on yourself and you're studying because especially if you're studying again or you're, you're not 100% sure how to study and you're not like, because a lot of times what happens is we use this as like a permanent product of like, here is where I start. I'm ha like, I'm halfway through, I finished this, I've done a great job studying, but sometimes that's not how it works. Sometimes you read chapters here and there, and you're not going to have that permanent product of reading a whole book from start to end. Um, so you have to find a way to take data on yourself. And then we have some, we have an example um, at the end. But it could be a paper calendar where you write how long you studied each day, it could be in the study notes app. Um, if you're doing uh, the questions and then checking those off as you go, but you need some way to make sure that you're feeling successful and that you're, you're, you're seeing your progress because your progress is happening in your brain, right? And it's like maybe happening a number of pages, but those pages will build slowly. So you want to make sure that you can see, oh, wow, I really studied this week. I got 25 hours in. That's huge. Especially like on the app, like there's nothing physically in front of you, like permanent product wise. Okay, now we have to do some self-reflecting on where do we start. So you need to look at your current schedule um, before you set your study schedule. What does your current schedule entail? Do you have kid activities? Do you have another job? What are your job hours? When do you have work meetings? When do you have kid activities or whatever it is, right? When do you have weddings? Casey's going to a wedding tomorrow. When do you have different type of things that you want to go to? Look at your schedule. Okay, and then you have to look at your existing commitments. Okay, so like um, for me, like it was not smart of me to be like, hey, Danielle, you should take this summer semester of your master's program while you're also pregnant and then also have your baby when your project is due. That was not a smart decision on my part. <laughs> so you need to look at what are my existing commitments and then determine how much time do you have available. And then you can make some shifts, right? Do I, do I have to go to this or can I skip that? Can where, where in my schedule do I have time? Are there things that you need to prioritize? My workout absolutely has to happen. It is a priority. Okay. So can I shift my workout to the afternoon instead of the morning? So I have that time open. So you're going to look at that schedule and map it out. 
Okay. So now that we have a plan for our schedule, we have to set some goals for ourselves. The first thing you need to look at, are you an early bird or a night owl? I am an early bird. Casey is an early bird. Leah is a, is a night owl. So um, for me, if I need stuff to get done, sometimes it's from 2.30. I'm really efficient from about 2.30, 2.45 in the morning to about noon. Um, my like hard wake up time most of the time is about 3.30 so that I can make sure I can get my stuff done. When I was studying, I decided that getting up in the morning and reading Cooper was what was best for me because I was a special education teacher in the classroom and a mom and I did special Olympics. And so it was just like, there was no, I was too tired by the time to get to the end of the day. And that's a lot of information to take in when you're tired. So figure that out. Um, what days of the week were best for you? Tuesdays was a really hard day for me to study because I had special Olympics and I was at special Olympics. I went from school and then dropped my kid off. And then I went to special Olympics and didn't get home till eight 30 or nine o'clock. So that was a hard day to study. So obviously I'm not going to, when you're studying, you don't want to guilt yourself. Okay. You're going to have days where you're not going to be able to get enough, like not enough. You're not going to have days where you're going to get studying in, but that's okay. You, you can't make you, you studied all the other six days. Like don't reflect on the one day that you didn't get any, like as much as you wanted done. Um, and then you have to set a realistic goal. Okay. So I'm going to use Casey and I as an example. Casey is, was married at the time and she, um, had cats and that was kind of like that was, and she had a job like as a RBT, right? So she was working 40 hours a week. But when she came home, it was just her and her uh, husband and the cats. So she was available to have 50 hours worth of studying a week. And I, my job let me, because they wanted me to pass, study at work. So I had at least 12 hours a day where I was dedicated. And that's not normal, but I didn't have kids and I dedicated my life to studying. Right. So I, on the other hand, had two little kids. I had a six-year-old and a three-year-old and I'm working, a, I'm a special education teacher in a classroom and I have special Olympics and I have to mom, right? And I have to wife. So my goal for myself was 20 to 25 hours a week so that I could have a range and say, okay, I got 21. That's right. Ooh, I got 25. Okay. Way to go. We must have not had special Olympics this week. Right. So set a realistic goal for yourself on your studying. You have to remember something is better than nothing. Okay. And don't compare how much you're studying to someone else also. And I think that the biggest point here is Mel asked in the chat, like how much you should be studying. It's like, okay, you have to look at validity of measurement. And so if you say, I'm going to study for two hours, but the two hours you're studying, you're half on your phone, you're not absorbing it, you're, you know, whatever. It's like those two hours mean shit. Like right. you need to look at, oh, maybe it's pages read and then a mock exam taken. So, you right. know, there's permanent product on your studying versus setting yourself a time period. Um, so also like, let's go back to science. You can't engage in bootleg reinforcement. So if you're saying like, I'm studying, but the TV is on, you're not really studying. Cause we're going to talk about that just right now. So <clears throat> before we get there, but you have to be mindful of like you, if you're going to set this goal, you have to stick to this goal. So you have to also be realistic, be realistic with yourself. Like I knew that if I was going to work on questions, I could work on those throughout my day and not worry about doing them at home. I knew if I needed to read Cooper, I need to do it in the morning because I for damn sure wasn't going to be able to do it at nighttime. So avoid overloading your schedule with too many tasks or unrealistic expectations, right? Like, don't be like, I am going to read a whole chapter of Cooper today. You will not. If you do good for you, but it is really difficult to go through. And that is not, is that the best use of your time? You know what I mean? So you really want to assess that. Allow your, uh, some flexibility for unexpected events or adjustments as needed, right? Like, oh shit, I, for, if you're me, I forgot to, you know, I told somebody I was going to do that. Right. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments. Maybe can I move this hour that I was planning on studying to the weekend and tack it on there or where am I at in my week? Oh, awesome. I'm already at 18 hours. Okay. I'm not going to stress about not having this one hour of studying because if I keep hitting my marks, I'm going to make my range. 
So have some flexibility. I also want you to have some flexibility in your thought of what is studying. So a lot of times what happens when we say we're studying, it's like only when we're in front of Cooper, does it count as studying, but that's not true. Are you reviewing your notes? Are you listening to Behavior Bitches podcast or an ABA podcast that gives you different types of examples in the applied sense? Are you taking mock exams, right? There's, there's different forms of studying. Are you sitting and talking it out or explaining it to someone who doesn't know what you're talking about and they're understanding it, right? That means that you understand. So have a flexible definition of studying so that you can all encompass all of your studying and not just like when I'm sitting in front of my book. Whoops. Okay. So you have all the things now what, right? So we've, we've made our schedule. We've assessed our schedule. We've made some adjustments. We've decided that we're going to get up in the morning or we're going to use this, allocate this time at nighttime to studying. So now I have to set up my study space, right? So Casey was talking about like, you have to look at that validity, right? Am I going to be able to really study in this space, right? If I was in the kitchen and my kids are out here? No, absolutely not. So we wanna set up our study space that's gonna be conducive to being successful. So we need to clean it up, we need to organize it, you need to make it your own. Um, for me, I'm a person that kind of like needs my desk organized or my things organized ahead of time, even though I know I'm gonna make a mess as I go because I'm pulling pins out and I'm getting paper and I'm shuffling things here. But what I've done is I've organized my brain first, like check, 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 and then get started. So do you like a smelly candle? Do you Are you a person that can do like, um, instrumental music in the background. What do you need in your space to help you feel successful and like help you declutter your brain so that you can take in that information? Okay, make sure you build in breaks. If you are a parent, this is my most successful tip for you is so when you take a break, make sure that your breaks are productive. I'm not saying it has to be like this all of the time, but for me, how I felt successful and may how I didn't have that mom guilt is when I took a break, I did the dishes. When I took the break, I changed out the laundry. When I did the break, I made kids lunches. So I was able to hit all of those mom things I needed to get done in those break times. But it also allowed me to be active in my break, which also allowed me to kind of reflect on the information that I was working through and not just take a break and get on my phone and like totally push it away. So like loading the dishwasher, I was able to kind of think through, okay, well, I've been think token economy and like here are the parts and pieces I just write. And so you're having that internal conversation with yourself as you're being productive and making sure you're feeling productive in your daily life. Um, Make sure you stick to your schedule and reinforce yourself for meeting your goal. If you feel like if a hard number of like 50 hours is really hard for you, set a range. So be realistic, but also be flexible. If, if you're not meeting that, right, we want to reevaluate our schedule and reevaluate our goals so that we do feel successful. I think one of the things that we don't do well is make sure that we reinforce ourselves. We're really good at reinforcing other people. We are not really good at reinforcing ourselves and using our own science to help us be successful. So can I check off as I go negative reinforcement, but can I also positively reinforce myself with some type of treat or prize or just like a, hey, way to go, you baddie. You got 20 hours in and this was a really difficult week. I'm really, you're, you go, like, look at all the things that you do. We have to use our science to help us be successful. So make sure that, and, and if you're not meeting your goal, that's okay. Like we, we, this is how we help people be successful is we set obtainable goals, but we don't do that very well with ourselves. So set a goal that you feel is obtainable. And if you keep hitting that mark, then, then adjust it and maybe make it a little bit, you know, okay, I've, I've been hitting 20. So I really want to shoot for 22 next week. So you can adjust your goal that way, but just be really mindful and have that honest conversation with yourself. And if you're not meeting your goal, you have to have that conversation of why am I not, am I really committed to this time, am I really putting in the effort that I'm supposed to be doing for when I'm studying? Okay, this goes back to like, how many hours, how many hours? Everyone studying is very individualized and you have to do what best meets your needs. So Casey was studying for the first time, okay? I was studying for the fourth time. So for me, I have a lot of base knowledge when it comes to studying again. So 20 to 25 hours was really help. That's what I felt like I could be successful and meet that goal. But I also had a lot of additional knowledge because I had taken it multiple times. 
So you really have to look at what is best for me so that I can be successful. And in comparison is a thief of joy. You can't compare because I didn't know Casey's work was allowing her to study at home or at work. That was news to me. And we're five years into this, right? So you, you don't know everyone's situation and like, you're just hearing a number like, oh, I'm getting 50 hours. And I'm like, holy fuck, how are you, how are you doing that? Like, I don't even know if there's enough hours in the day. Right. But I didn't know she was studying at work, which makes sense. Like, okay, now I understand how you're getting your 50 hours. You also have to make sure that, you know, your learning style, everyone kind of just assumes that they're a visual learner but there are multiple learning styles. You can be a visual learner. You can be an auditory learner. You can be a kinesthetic learner, which means you need to like mess with the stuff. You need to figure out what type of learner you are. I know that I am a visual learner, but what was really nice when I figured this out is I'm also an auditory learner. So in my time driving from different campuses, I was listening to the Behavior Bitches podcast or I was listening to Collective. So I was getting the information on like writing my notes visually and going to Collective and then also hearing the information. And so I was meeting myself on both sides. So if you don't know your learning styles, you can always Google like free learning styles quiz and then take that quiz so that you can figure out how can I be successful with the information that I have? Because this is a lot of information. And so if you can meet your learning style, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to put it in the information in the way that you need to be successful. So when I was studying, there was no Behavior Bitches podcast or Study Notes ABA, um, but there was Behavioral Observation podcast, which mm-hmm. I had to drive two and a half hours every weekend, one way to get to my master's program and spend the weekend there. Um, and so I would always listen to that. And I was really into Sitecore YouTube videos. I was yes. really into... Um, just driving instead of listening to music, which I wanted to do, I would listen to things that I thought were helping me learn. Mm-hmm. Um, so auditory was really big. I didn't think I was an auditory learner, but now that I think back on it, those are some of my best learned times. Um, and then for me, I'm not so much visi- like a visual, like I don't need to see th- something be creative or pretty, but I need to feel things. So I would hang all my notes everywhere and just be like, all right. I needed to see it and then interact with it. Um, I didn't care if it looked like a bank pen or not. So everyone is different. So make sure you know what you are. Well, and I will say if you are a person that, um, like for me, my workout was really important. I will tell you what I did a lot because, and I, I noticed, so I am terrible at sitting still. Like if I'm having to like listen to something and watch it. And I've noticed, I, and I did this a lot, which now that I reflect on this, because I was trying to watch a movie the other day and I couldn't physically do it in my living room, but I took my iPad to my treadmill and started walking. And I was able to watch the movie for like 35, 40 minutes. But I do remember doing that a lot at the gym is I would pull up my collective on my phone, put my headphones in, and I would just walk and listen to them talk of a collective I had already participated in. And so if you're a person that you kind of have the wiggles, get on the treadmill or get on your stationary bike and just listen. And then that way you're moving your body, but you're helping kind of focus your energy in. And so that you can take that information in and you're getting your exercise. Okay. So, um, per the usual, right. We are always here to help you. Um, We have collectives that are live and recorded that you can purchase. We have drop-in classes that are pre-recorded, or you can come drop in with us live and in person. Absolutely come to tutoring if you feel like you need to talk it out with someone, or you don't understand something, or if you want to come set up a plan, or you're saying, hey, I'm doing this again, and I really don't know where to start, come to tutoring. We have mock exams. We absolutely have the app. You guys are always in the app. I love that Casey's app. People always like show up. I love this. Um, Okay. So... Study knows ABA. You can email Casey at contact. It's either Casey will email you back or I email back sometimes. Absolutely behavior bitches podcast. Maybe one day I'll get to be on another episode, but we'll see. And then study knows ABA. Okay. But I want to show you don't leave yet because why didn't it show up? Where's the calendar? I don't know. It might be in for now. It might be tomorrow's class. Oh, well, I thought it was in the slides. I did. Did you open the newest one I sent you? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to show you from my iPad because I just had to make mine. So 
Tomorrow's class is all about reading Cooper and how to set that up. Um, so, so it's how me, to like make your care for that. Yeah. So let me share my iPad with you so I can show you. This is very much, I am a paper calendar person. Um, it just, that's how I schedule my tutoring, which like literally drives people crazy, but I, I'm just a paper calendar person. When I take data on my, my workouts at the gym, it's on my paper calendar, but so oh my God, I, look at this. So when I was studying, I had a paper calendar and I wish there was enough space over here on the edge that I could show you, but I totaled everything out. So I ran my weeks, my start to end, and I started here and I ran my week this way and we ended, I ended here. And so then what I would do is I would say, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half hours of reading Cooper, right? So then I could say up here, right? Nine and a half hours of Cooper. Then I had 30, 60. So I had two hours of my ethics book. So that puts me at nine, 12. And then we had collective for two hours. So two, four, that's four hours of collective. And then I had, I reviewed for an hour, probably longer on the weekends. So like, let's just say, like, let's just put four hours here. Cause that was probably more like it. So then I have, let's see, an four, five hours. So I have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and a half hours of studying for the week, right? And then I also had these 50s are the amount of questions I did each day. So this is how I tracked my studying and I did it per duration because that was what helped me be successful. Um, so I had some, you know, it just depends on the week. You can have a plus or minus, but the goal is 20. So this is kind of how I set mine up so that I knew what I was doing because I was doing it for time. Um, so, all right, I'm going to stop. And sharing. so tomorrow you're going to see Liat's page of how she does it for number of pages, um, which is each, every person is different. So right. just know that there, everyone has different learning styles. You have to find what works for you and not put yourself down if you're not meeting that and adjust it and be like, all right, well, guess what? This week was a little bit harder than last. And I only did this, but I not only did that, you did that. Exactly. And you have to remember, literally, it's the same thing of like exercising. Something is better than nothing. If you only have 10 minutes, 10 minutes is better than no minutes. I'm going to tell you that right here, right now. So if you only have 10 minutes, get 10 minutes in, you're going to feel successful. So you also have to work really hard about not guilting yourself, right? It's like when you're trying to watch what you eat and you watch what you eat six out of the seven days, you only focus on the one day where you're like, oh, I ate like trash and I've ruined my whole, you know, no, you have not. You're fine. Okay. You can sit and relax. You can, you, it, you can, I made sure. So studying does not have to take you away from the things that you love. Okay. I made sure that I got up early, even on the weekends, because I told myself, this is not a forever situation. This is a right now situation. And there are some sacrifices I have to make, which sacrifices mean that I'm getting up at three o'clock in the morning. That's the sacrifice I'm making. But on the weekends, I got up at four o'clock in the morning because guess what? By the time it was 10 a.m., I was good and done and no one had even really gotten their day started yet. So I was done studying by 10 a.m. And then I could still do all the things. We can go to the park. We can go to this. We can do this. We can go to the grocery store. We can still be successful in our everyday life. Because I went ahead and got up and took care of my business in the morning on Saturday. I slept in some on Sunday. And I may have slept till 6. But Sunday was my light day. I did some like reviewing and YouTube and all of that. But if you... You don't have to give up those things or miss those things. Like you can just get up early, L legitimately. Like Leah gives me a hard time and says, I don't know how Danielle has so much time in the day. It is legitimately because I get up early so that I can take care and make sure that I get all of those things checked off. So when I was studying, it truly was getting up at three o'clock in the morning, reading from three, three o'clock to when I had to get ready at 5.30, be at school by 7.15, be a teacher until 3.15, and then pick up my kids and then come home and like parent and then try to get some reviewing in um, like why Lily was reading a book or coloring. And that was only like 30 minutes. So 
just be, just set yourself up to be successful and give yourself some grace. Okay. I will say that I know that mornings are not for everyone. Liat, I like to get all my work done in the tub. I have my computer set up and all this stuff at like 5 a.m. Um, but if I sleep in or try to, I'm more anxious. If I just get out, up and moving and get some food in my belly. And then I'm like, all right, you know what? No one in the world is up right now. This is the most peaceful time. I may yes. be tired. It may suck, but it's not forever. Like Danielle said, and it has became actually my forever. Cause after I did it for so long, um, now it is my routine where I get my emails done and I get, you know, work done. That is computer work that no one else wants to do. And, um, night times I know are not for me. I, if you talk to me after, 6 p.m. I'm probably not going to respond to you. Like that's it. Like I am in my zone at 6 p.m. Like good night, goodbye. Um, but again, if you're a night owl and that's when you function the best, that's okay. Yeah. Just find what works for. You. Absolutely. Perfect. So do we want to stop the recording and then if they want to have ask questions, they can. Yeah, let's do it. Ready? Go. <laughs>